important an area of attention. So if we can work, as Zach mentioned, the reason obviously we are talking about CARD is because of the horrific events that happened on Wednesday night. If we can work to get the pictures of those victims. Um, actually today I had the chance to speak at Hasn't even aired yet um, with the father of Bill Young, the grandfather of Aaron Young. That is the father and son who tragically died on Wednesday night in the bowling alley. And, you know, for so many of the victims, they're dealing with sadness and they're dealing with grief, but there's also this sense of closure that they're needing too to find out what happened to Robert Card. And so I hope that this, in some senses, can provide some closure for them as they move forward in their grief. Absolutely. Um, and if we have the video from earlier today to show the crew searching in that area, well, I, I hope um, our Alex Haskell, um, who may be nearby that scene, is, is getting ready to speak to us. Um, Police have been in this area for, for really days now, yeah. uh, and they've been open and honest about kind of that they were really looking everywhere. Um, they were looking at the Cards family's properties mm -hmm. in Bowdoin. Uh, they were looking at, as this video shows, at that boat ramp. Uh, this was just earlier today where Sam Rogers spent much of the day, as well as a number of um, other reporters and really reporters from all across the country were yeah. there. Uh, they had dive teams in place kind of combing the river. A and they had said, uh, I believe it was the press conference yesterday, police had said that they could be searching for quote unquote bodies right. at the time because um, they didn't want to specifically say that they, they were looking in that water um, for Card himself. Um, but but it seems again, if you are just joining us, just tuning in, the body of Robert Card has been found in Lisbon. We have a crew on the scene. A press conference is set um, for 10 p.m. with Maine State Police. And we're hoping, yeah, at that press conference we can get some more answers uh, to the questions that everyone at home has about what's been happening since Wednesday night's fatal shootings that took so many lives here in Maine. Yes, and we are um, continuing to work to get more specific information with the, uh, for you, rather. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, police are going to share that uh, in the next half hour or so. Is our Alex Haskell uh, there on the scene yet? Uh, okay, um, uh, Alex Haskell is there on the scene. Uh, he's been in uh, Lewiston throughout much of the evening yeah. where there was actually some activity there earlier. Right. Um, the superintendent of Lewiston Public Schools putting out a notice that uh, the, the fields on the high school campus, I guess, had been closed down mm -hmm. and, and there was some kind of police presence there. Uh, they seemed to be perhaps looking for something there. Right. Um, when, when in fact this scene in Lisbon uh, apparently uh, is was the focus and that's where uh, they did find again Robert Card's body um, according to Senator Angus King saying that uh, he was found behind, by the recycling center uh, where Card apparently used to work um, he was found shot in the same clothes he had on the same clothes we saw him walk into mm -hmm. that bowling alley with in that surveillance video the first night um, we joined you here on the air well it looks like we have Alex who's getting set up here if we remember last night Alex was in Bowdoin at that home on Meadow Lane and he was uh, bringing us all of that live coverage of police who were outside of the home. Brian and Chris, thanks for joining us at the desk here. Uh, this update though, I know that you were here last night when that was all unfolding. We heard police shouting and at that point a lot of us maybe thought, okay, the, it could come to a could conclusion to an tonight. And, uh, you know, I think that was part of the mystery last night was we didn't really get a clear answer last night. Right. Uh, you know, Alex was there and uh, had the video in those moments when we saw police leaving the scene of that house in Bowdoin. Um, and then obviously we knew that the, uh, the search continued today. Um, as we had briefings from from officials today as well. Yeah, I want to. Um, we have Alex Haskell standing by to tell us about the scene, but I want to wait one second. Um, I'm just seeing, just to get a sense of what this means for you at home and everybody watching across the state tonight. This is, of course, a huge sense of relief. I know that's a little bit cliche, mm -hmm. but it is real. Um, Superintendent of Schools Jake Langless uh, in Lewiston, um, who put out a tweet earlier tonight that they had closed down the athletic fields there to, to search, um, just tweeting out, "He has been found. A wave of relief just ran over." me a big step toward healing and everyone who has been searching in such dangerous conditions can go home safe to their families. Much more work to do, um, mm -hmm. but this news means so much. So much, and there is so much work to do in the days ahead. Uh, Chris, did you have something? I just um, reaching out to as many law enforcement sources right. as I can to confirm this. Yeah, meantime, why don't we go to yeah. News Center Rain's Alex Haskell, who is there on the scene and can, and can tell us what's going on there. Alex. <laughs> Hey guys, yeah, so we are in Lisbon Falls right now. Here's this road behind me, that's Lisbon Street. Then across is uh, a road called uh, Capitol 
Ave, and that's blocked off right now. We have a few members of law enforcement, uh, police from the town of Lisbon. They've blocked off this road. Now, we don't know if along this road is where uh, Robert Card's body has been found, but we know this is the area where police have been looking for the past several days. Off to my left here, down a little ways is the boat ramp, and that's a uh, boat launch, and that's where law enforcement have been looking, accessing the Androscoggin River, trying to search for Robert Card's body. Uh, we are looking forward to a press conference that's expected at 10 o'clock. I'll read you a tweet from Maine State Police. It says a news conference will be held Friday at 10 p.m. at Lewiston City Hall. We encourage you to tune into your local TV stations to watch a live stream. So we are expected to uh, hear some sort of news from them, uh, possibly on the discovery of Robert Card's body. Again, we are along Lisbon Street. Across from us is Capitol Ave, which is blocked off right now by police from the town of Lisbon. So that's what we're seeing right now, guys. And we are just waiting to hear if this is exactly where Robert Card's body was found. This is the area where police have been looking for quite some time. Uh, I need your, your mic. Um, Alex, if you can hear me. Um, you were on a scene last night um, that was much different from what you're showing now, uh, where there was a, a lot of police mm -hmm. activity, um, several armored vehicles. It, it looks like you're being held back from, from that, and this scene doesn't look like that tonight, correct? No, from what we can see, this scene is a lot quieter. I'm just seeing two members of law enforcement where, as yesterday, there were dozens of law enforcement members, and they were all coming down on this one home in Bowdoin where there possibly was Robert Card, where police thought Robert Card was, uh, but it turned out to be uh, empty. Robert Card was not in that home. But we saw members of law enforcement, we saw armored vehicles, we saw a K-19, we also saw a helicopter circling that home where law enforcement thought Robert Card was staying. But that turned out no, yes. not to be true but his body has been found here in Lisbon Falls. Uh, it's just not exactly sure where he was found. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, his body was found. We are standing along Lisbon Street in Lisbon Falls, and across from me is Capitol Ave, which is blocked off by police. A much different scene from yesterday in Bowdoin, where we had lots of law enforcement come down on this one home. So this scene, much quieter here tonight in Lisbon Falls. And we're yeah. fairly close to the boat launch. That is where police have been searching and authorities have been searching for Robert Card, and that's where they got access to the Androscoggin River. Yes, they did, Alex, earlier today. Um, we had crews on the scene there as they were combing that river. I also want to point out that behind Alex, you can see the traffic moving flows, uh, flowing uh, smoothly yeah. there um, because uh, the, the uh, shelter in place has been lifted. Mm -hmm. So people are, are back out in that community tonight as, as the state is, is really um, having this moment to, to really a big sigh of relief. Yes, you know? for sure. Just to put some context yeah. to what Alex just said, a very important point about the distance from where he was found to the boat ramp. where the boat ramp was is about 1.1 miles basically striked it right down Lisbon Street and it's right along the it's, it's the, the, the the building where he's being reported to be found is about is right near where the rail trail parking is for mm -hmm. Lisbon rail trail um, and Blue Ox Malt House if you know that area it's right behind mm -hmm. Lisbon High School yeah, and, and that is in the area sorry Zach uh, between the two kind of roadblocks on Lisbon Street that happened Wednesday night. Which so, is where you were. Yeah, which is where I was on Wednesday down. night. Yeah, yeah, I could only go so far just past the mobile station on Lisbon Street. And then Sam Rogers and I looped around to see how far we could go on the other side. And it was just uh, just before kind of where this area is where they have reportedly found Robert Card's uh, body. And so it's just interesting that that has been the main area of focus now for three days. And it shows that, as we were saying earlier, I mentioned you talking about the press conference this morning that police were really laying out their strategy for searching today they and clearly very clear yeah where their efforts worked. were going to yeah. be uh, and that they would be back in that area specifically uh, yeah. in Lisbon the whole time all right we're taking a live look there um, at the podium uh, in Lewiston City Hall where we are expecting to hear from state police um, in about 25 minutes now um, at the top of the hour uh, Shannon Moss messaging us uh, that that is going to happen we are expecting to get the latest from police
at that briefing. This, of course, is where we've had several briefings now over the past few days um, to get the latest information from police. Um, and in this search, we can't underestimate the fact that there were hundreds of, of police officers across the state that, yeah, the that have worked tirelessly. The last kind of solid number uh, we were given was about 350. Wow. Um, presumably, it had only grown over the last 24 hours of, of how many people were actually searching and, and actively looking in kind of those multiple locations. Uh, you know, our crews have been um, in Bowdoin and Monmouth and Lewiston and Lisbon, um, kind of following that search. Uh, you're looking kind of now at a map that's going to kind of zoom in yeah. to this area that we're talking about tonight. Um, that would be the, the Lisbon Transfer and Recycling Center, which um, is where Senator King is saying uh, his body was located tonight. I, we can confirm through multiple independent law enforcement sources that Robert Card's body has been there found. Multiple independent law enforcement sources confirmed to me just now that his body has been found. One of those sources uh, is trying to get more information from me about where exactly he was found and the nature of that. Yeah, so Senator Angus King is saying it was at, at the recycling center there where um, apparently he worked. Um, that, that's the source um, that, that we have confirmed as well as those multiple reports um, um, from law, law enforcement personnel tonight. You know, and this is news obviously that um, is spreading quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, just um, I know I'm one person, but the number of messages I'm right. personally yeah. receiving um, about this news um, just goes to show how closely I think our state has been watching yeah. and waiting for this mm -hmm. development. Um, whether it was a capture alive, mm -hmm. discovered, or found in this case, uh, as we're learning, uh, has has been found dead. Um, right. But again, in that specific area, uh, where there was that question of, okay, police said just this afternoon that they have not had a sight of him right. um, mm -hmm. since the night of the shooting 48 hours ago now. Um, so there was that mystery question out there of he could be anywhere. Um, right. And Maine is a large area with a lot of rural wooded areas. Um, so the fact that he was found now in uh, such a close proximity to where the search was, where mm -hmm. the shootings happened, um, is, is an interesting development tonight. And that feeling of could be anywhere mm. is such an uneasy feeling for everyone because right. it wasn't just uh, looking in Lewiston. As you mentioned earlier, there were several towns and communities. What was it, 530 plus tips that yeah. police yes. had received? Yes. Right. So, you know, that feeling of security, hopefully back in the hands of Mainers tonight after a rough few days for us that, as you mentioned, Brian, we are all connected. We are all one team. And I'm hoping everyone can take a sigh of relief tonight. So I am now hearing from a different law enforcement source mm -hmm. that the location that Senator Angus King is speaking of is correct. Okay. The main recycling core as we've mentioned through that map, about one mile down Lisbon Street from the boat launch. Yeah, I actually want to correct that map real quick. There is both the Lisbon Transfer Station as well as this private recycling correct. company. Correct. Um, so, so just want to clarify there, uh, the main recycling corporation, um, and, and that is, is what we're talking about, which is different from, um, uh, I'm just admittedly looking at Google Maps here, uh, the Lisbon uh, City Solid Waste Department. Mm -hmm. uh, so that main recycling corporation, um, we are now have confirmed that that is where Robert Card worked, um, and he was found uh, shot there. Um, apparently, in the in the same clothes you you just saw in that image um, of him when he walked into spare time that night. And, and we also have confirmed um, that he, he did die by suicide. We just have that in now. And Zach, you look, you looked at um, where the boat launches compared to where Main Recycling Center is, and how far was that distance again? Well, that one, was one point oh, one I'm sorry, miles. Chris, one point yeah. one, one miles. One mile straight down yep. Lisbon yeah, Street. Yeah, so straight down Lisbon Street there. Um, see what else I can get for you guys. So again, at this point, we are waiting in about 22 minutes from now. We anticipate uh, a briefing back at Lewiston City Hall, which is where the hub of information has really been coming from for the last uh, 48 hours. You can see it there in the small box. The podium is set up, and our Alex Haskell, uh, of course, is live tonight. Um, Alex, anything else you can share with us about what you're seeing where you are at this hour? Yeah, so I'm just starting to take in, you know, kind of where we are, a much different scene than where we were yesterday. If you remember, we were in Bowdoin. It was rural Maine. There were fields and farms all around us. But uh, this is this is a, a busy stretch of road here on Lisbon Street. 
right uh, in front of me here, we have a McDonald's. Across the road here, we have a Walgreens. You know, this is where people come to eat and shop, much different from yesterday. And I will comment on what's behind us here. It is Capitol Ave, which down the road is Main Recycling, where Robert Card's body was found. And that road is now blocked off. We have two law enforcement members behind us and a, a cruiser blocking off the road. And this stretch here along Lisbon Street is really busy. Um, as it was mentioned, you know, uh, the shelter in place that has been lifted. So people are back out and this news is getting around quick. We got here not too long ago and I think we were the second or third camera crew here, but uh, that is no longer the case, whereas dozens of crews are now here as this news is, is coming in. Uh, but we are along Lisbon Street and I think it was Chris who mentioned it. We are, I typed it into my phone here, we are two minutes, a two minute car ride from the boat launch, so not too far away from where police were gathered earlier. And I just was turning to see a police cruiser passing us, um, but they continue to go good, yeah. down the I'm road nice. here on Lisbon Street. So that's the scene right now, uh, much different from yesterday when police were coming down on this home in Bowdoin, where they thought Robert Card was staying, but that turned out not to be the case, guys. And Alex, I, I don't know if um, our, the photographer there can show us more of the scene um, where you are to just get a better idea of the, of the sheer number of news yeah. crews there uh, and what that street looks like. Um, and, and while he does so, um, can you talk to us about what it was like to be there last night um, when police were s surrounding that home on Meadow Road in Bowdoin compared to compared to tonight? I, I know you also spoke to some neighbors in the area um, were, who were probably among the many people, like you said, Hannah, that were really on edge. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it was Bowdoin, it was rural Maine, and I think at one point there was around nine law enforcement vehicles. There were two uh, armored trucks. One was from New Hampshire State Police. They were all pulled up in front of this home. There were canine crews. There was a helicopter. So oh, many members of law enforcement were focused on this one spot, and that's not the case here. It is pretty quiet except of the vehicles driving in front of us along Lisbon Street. Um, yesterday I did chat with some neighbors because they were blocked. The Road Meadow Drive in Bowdoin, that was blocked off as police were conducting their operation on this home. I chatted with one gentleman, an older gentleman who was out on a drive with his dog and they eventually parked waiting for the road to open up to get home and he was telling me that he knows the Card family. He knows Robert, Robert Card's dad and and he was telling me that this family is kind, they're nice, and he was in disbelief that a member of this family could ever do something like this. And I think it's fair to say, you know, we don't all know this family, but we are shocked that something like this could happen here in Maine. And where we are pointing at right now, that is one of the entrances to a Walgreens. Police have that blocked off as well. And that's only because I believe uh, you can enter that way. Adam is my photographer is panning through. You can go through that parking lot and go to Capitol Ave where that main recycling plant where Robert Card's body was found. So they had that blocked up as well, just making sure folks can't go down that road. And I think you can start to see the members of other news crews that are starting to show up. Uh, and I'm just looking around me. I commented we were in rural Maine yesterday and we are in a busy town here now tonight. We have McDonald's, we have a Walgreens, we have a Dunkin' Donuts, we have a Domino's Pizza here. This is very different from where we were yesterday and we are expecting to get more news tonight. We mentioned that there's that press conference in Lewiston at 10 o'clock where some information is going to be shared. Maine State Police, uh, they tweeted out, you know, we encourage you to tune into your local TV stations to watch a live stream and get some more information. You're looking at some members of law enforcement here blocking off Capitol, Capitol Ave there with the town of Lisbon. Right down that road, that's where the main recycling plant is, where Robert Card's body was found. Thank you, Alex, uh, for that perspective. We'll be coming back to Alex in just a few minutes, who is there in Lisbon at the scene of where Robert Card's body was found. We also have another reporter who just arrived there in uh, Lisbon. Brooke Griffin is joining us. She's been out and really all around that area, similar area in Maine today. Uh, Brooke, what can you tell us about what you see? 
Yeah, this is an incredibly different scene from what we've seen all day today. This is here at the Lisbon Industrial Park. If you're familiar with the area, it's a Lisbon Street and it has the, the Walgreens. There's a McDonald's to our right right now. We've actually we sat at this McDonald's for a little bit today. We got food here. It was completely quiet. So there were no reporters. There was no law enforcement. It's a completely different scene from about six or so hours ago. Now what we do know so far again, the Associated Press along with our own sources here at News Center Maine have confirmed that Robert Card has been found dead supposedly here at this recycling center. Maine is what it's called. I believe it's just right down Capitol Avenue again near the Walgreens and again, it's just a very different scene. It's busy here right now. There are a lot of people driving by. Granted, a lot of these people are reporters. These are news crews, but you can see that it, this uh, Capitol Avenue is completely blocked off. They do have a lot of law enforcement here at this point. They have on armor. They have long guns in their hands. There is a lot going on. Now, if you pan all the way down to this street, this is again where the recycling center is. You can see the lights flashing for that law enforcement that's down in that area. This is a lot of police in this area. We've seen state police. We've seen Lisbon police. We've seen, I believe, from other states, their state police as well. Some even going by with lights and sirens at this point. So this is a very, very developing situation. News crews are piling into this area. It is becoming much larger really by the minute now. We are working to find out exactly how and when this happened. Now that's going to happen in that presser, hopefully more than likely. We've heard that people need to tune into this. Maine State Police, like you said, tweeting out you need to watch. This is something that we're looking to watch just as much as you guys as well. They're sitting at home. A lot of information that will hopefully come out of that. But again, what we do know so far is that Robert Card has been found dead. We have confirmed that and a likely scene is here at the main recycling center in Lisbon. We spent a lot of time here. You've seen us here, but this is a lot different than it has been before. Back to you guys. And Brooke, I know you were in touch with uh, several local first responders uh, in the area of, of Bowdoin, Lisbon, um, the, the general larger area today. Uh, did they give you any insight about what this search has been like, um, both from a tactical perspective, but perhaps even as a personal one? Yeah, so I have been talking to one of the fire chiefs in this area. I don't think he wants to be named at this moment, so I actually don't want to say what town he's from, but it is right here in this area. He actually told me earlier this morning when I asked him for an interview tomorrow uh, for a story, he said, quote, I don't know if it's going to be relevant. There is a lot changing rapidly here today. He told us that they are searching. The, they were searching the woods. That was a big area that they were looking at. Of course, last night we also saw that house in Bowdoin that was surrounded for a period of time. There's been a lot of hits and misses so far. I think they said over 530 tips were called in at some point over the past few days. They've researched a lot of those. We've followed a lot of those here in New Center, Maine. We've been trying to keep up with the law enforcement to make sure that we're there and bringing you this information. But that chief told me that he really did think that it was going to end today. This is something that he called several hours ago. He couldn't give us a lot of details because he didn't want to jeopardize both the safety of us and the safety of those first responders that were working that scene. So this is something that I, it looks like it's been in the works for several hours, if not several days. They really closed in on this quick as soon as they, they found that area. All right, Brooke. All right, Brooke, thank you so much for your reporting there today. Brooke joining us um, from one of our sister stations uh, to really uh, help us out um, and, yeah. and, and handle this situation with us. And Brooke is in Lisbon along with Alex Haskell, who we were just talking to. A press conference coming up at City Hall in Lewiston in about 12 minutes now and we'll be uh, streaming that live as well but if you're just tuning in uh, we have confirmed that Robert Card's body has been found in Lisbon he's reported dead uh, and that was a death by suicide that we've been able to uh, confirm here tonight a sigh of relief for so many Mainers who have been you know waiting uh, and nervous
homeless, uh, a lot of them under uh, shelter in place in Androscoggin and Sagadahawk counties. That now being lifted after 48 hours of this manhunt. Uh, we do have Chris Costa and Brian Yukono joining us on the desk. If we're able to include them here, I think Chris is uh, wanting to give an update. Well, I'm just hearing. I'm hearing from um, friends and family of the victims who say they, f they feel like they can breathe again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, what you were just talking about. Yeah. This, this sense, this suspense, rather, for all yeah. of these days waiting for a resolution to this. Well, it, we were talking about this earlier. It's just. It's a lot of emotions, different yeah. emotions, and yeah. it feels like you can't experience one without having the other. And so it's right. almost like this is some closure they needed to be able to move forward, right. and they will never be the same, I, well, the families of these no. victims. But they're able to have this small piece of closure, knowing that they're moving forward in grief and that the person responsible, at least there's an answer. Well, and I think uh, the, the moment of relief for the greater public at this point is, you know, even though the shelter in place was technically lifted this afternoon around five o'clock, there was still that encouragement from the commissioner of the public, Department of Public Safety to say, be alert, yeah. be aware of your right. surroundings, um, because for all they knew, Robert Card was still out there. Um, so I think even for those folks in those communities to know that at least, yes, we always need to be alert. In this instance, there's, a, there's at least a pause or a brief moment to say, okay, this immediate threat uh, is behind us um, with this outcome that uh, his body has been found tonight. And again, um, we're being told uh, by suicide um, with a gunshot uh, and not far from where um, police said they found his car um, mm -hmm. on Wednesday night, which was kind of the last uh, any kind of indication about where he could be or where he was headed. Um, so right in that area. And also not far from the original scene. Um, right. So uh, yeah. about 11, uh, 12 miles, a 20 minute drive from that original scene, spare time. Um, because remember here, uh, this is the man police say walked into that bowling alley Wednesday night um, and, and then moved on to a bar and grill four miles away and killed 18 people um, and injured 13 others. We are just getting a statement from U.S. Senator Susan Collins tonight saying, quote, tonight may can breathe a collective sigh of relief thanks to the brave first responders who worked night and day to find this killer. When President Biden called me this evening to tell me the perpetrator of this heinous attack in Lewiston had been found, we both expressed our profound appreciation for the courage and determination of these brave men and women. And I also want to say that earlier today um, I spoke to Katie Card, um, that is the sister-in-law of Robert Card. Um, she was telling me that they, the family has been cooperating with police as much as they can um, and that this has been a, a tough time for them. Take a listen to some of what she had to say. You know, our hearts and prayers go out to all of those involved and we're doing everything we can to help assist um, law enforcement. We've been working with them nonstop since this happened. So um, just that we all hope that he comes forward or he is found and Again, just that we hope that the attention will go towards the victims and their families. We, we just, our hearts are broken. And I know Katie also spoke to NBC News uh, extensively, and maybe she shared some of this with you as well, Zach, but just uh, Robert Card's past mental health struggles and uh, what he was hearing reportedly from Katie, the uh, voices in his head. So I know that since this incident has happened, they had sent sent countless messages to to Robert, uh, asking him to do the right thing and turn himself in. Obviously, those messages were going unanswered. Uh, but it's great to hear the perspective of his family and get a little context of Robert Card. Yeah, and I want to be careful about how we talk about this, of course, yeah. um, in the mental health context. Um, but she she did say it was a relatively new thing mm -hmm. um, for him. This was not a lifelong situation uh, that the family was dealing with there. Um, so um, obviously uh, a complicated night of yeah. emotions for them as well, um, but a, a, a large sigh of relief across the state tonight um, as, again, if you are just joining us here on the air, Robert Card found dead after this three-day manhunt. Um, he was found dead um, at Maine Recycling Corporation uh, that, according to Maine Senator Angus King, is, is the recycling center where he used to work. Um, he died from a self-inflicted um, gunshot wound in, in the same clothes uh, he had on uh, that day um, when he uh, Wednesday night um, when he walked into that bowling alley we're working to learn uh, more information um, and and we're expecting to uh, hear from police any moment now
And we've been seeing this video from um, Lisbon where Alex Haskell was. This is um, from earlier, of course, at this point right now. This is from last night, the search at the home in Bowdoin. Um, but, you know, when we were seeing that video of the Walgreens and the, and yeah. the, the side Can road closed there, um, you know, presumably at this point, um, that is all still closed off because even though they can confirm we found his body, um, that is likely considered a crime scene oh, in itself and right. it needs to be processed and that takes time as well. So there certainly could be a question of, okay, why is that, why are all these police still here? Why is this still such a scene? Um, because there's, there's a whole part of the investigation that would likely need to happen at this location now. Um, just as we know, the investigation continues and we were told by police will likely be a multi-day process mm -hmm. at the two sites of the shooting in Lewiston at the bowling alley and at the bar as well um, because as we heard today from the briefing um, you know they need to analyze every bullet casing they need to analyze every scuff mark on the wall they need to look at all of the evidence on these scenes to really piece together what happened so presumably they will need to do the same in Lisbon where they are now this is some of that um, drone video of the the bar scene um, which we have commented on uh, it was it was um, difficult to see that the parking lot was still full mm -hmm. when we knew that hours before this video was recorded what happened there mm -hmm. uh, and it just represents um, the people in our community who um, did not make it home that night and, and arrived there for what they thought was going to be just an evening of uh, fun. Yeah, the last time we heard from police around 5 o'clock was, was when they, they confirmed the names of, of all of the victims, the youngest 14 years old. And I actually spoke to the grandfather of that 14 year old today. Um, that's what I just came back to the studio uh, with that, yes. that interview and I mean, man, was it hard, but kind of speaking to the community, the parking lot, before we even had an interview, um, this man lives close to uh, my parents, so we were all out in the street, and one by one, neighbors were coming and gathering and, you know, sharing their condolences and giving hugs and being there for one another and showing up in the way that they could, and I think that really just speaks to Maine and what yes. Maine is. Yeah. They will show up for you. You have support. You have community. These yeah. victims' families who feel probably so alone and isolated right now lean on the state of Maine. Here we're showing their, their faces now. Earlier today we were able to get photos of all 18 victims. I found out a, a couple of things about many of those victims. Yeah. Um, as the night has gone on, um, when that news came out, uh, we also again heard from Lewis and Superintendent Jake Langless that Lucille Violet have been working for the district for decades as part of the business office and mentored many people in the district. Um, I'm hearing from more uh, friends and family of the victims who are saying uh, they know somebody who's in, I'm speaking to a particular person who lost four friends wow. in one night yeah. and is telling me they are going to go spend tomorrow with a family member who was in the bowling alley that night and was shot four times. Oh. And apparently that person's condition is improving, according to this family member. Um, and that's the other part of the conversation is, um, mm -hmm. you know, these, these are the 18 neighbors of ours who were murdered this week. Um, 13 people were, were victims, were right. direct victims, had injuries. Right. Um, and uh, certainly their stories and their situations, um, we have a lot to learn about uh, right. of what they went through and, and what is ahead for them. Um, and then kind of there are the victims of the others who were there right. uh, and, and escaped. Right. Uh, I, the only other thing I can add is kind of trying to uh, convey the emotions that our community is feeling tonight is mm -hmm. just from the people who are reaching out to me and talking. Right. And, and one of them is, you know, a law enforcement source saying, many of the things I think we can expect, these have been long days, yeah. not much rest, that the stress is very real, that even though this is their job, it is still hard on them. Um, and the message he said to me, and I, I think it probably goes for everybody, is get some rest, hug your family, and be safe. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't that go for everybody right now? That it does. Um, obviously, a, a big moment to just pause and breathe um, and, and realize that in some ways, this is over while in others it is it is just beginning. Uh, this is again is a live look at Lewiston City Hall. Um, you can see um, an interpreter there, sign language um, interpreter, uh, waiting at the podium for police to address the public um, and uh, explain uh, what happened in the hours. Um, it's only been, uh, well, it's been about five hours now since they they last uh, started another press mm -hmm. conference where they identified those victims and we're, we're expecting to hear more uh, about how this all ended. Um, if you're just joining us again, Robert Card, um, the suspected shooter uh, in that Lewiston mass shooting, found dead uh, in Lisbon. 
um, not unique to see a sign language interpreter at uh, a press event. Um, what is unique is the the tie to what happened here. Right. right. Um, we know that there was a there was a group of, of, of deaf younger people who were there bowling. Um, they were there with um, one of their mentors, one of the, one of the people they have presumably learned from, uh, someone that our own Vivian Lee spent a lot of time talking to uh, just two months ago. Um, building, creating a camp, an environment for uh, children who are hard of hearing, who, who had nowhere else to turn because they were the only person they knew who, ha who had a, a hearing impairment. Um, so direct connection to those members of our communities. Um, so uh, there, there, for me, I think there is a prominence of seeing um, the interpreter at these press mm -hmm. briefings as well because uh, that part of our community was so hit hard by this as well. Absolutely, and um, we understand that members of that community, family members, loved ones, friends are, are watching now, um, and we will be sure as soon as that press conference begins to include the sign language interpreter. Just a reminder to our crews um, that, w that we want to include um, the, the sign language um, so that that information is communicated in the best possible way. Yeah, and speaking of, we should be going to that press conference any minute now. We do have a crew there, as well as two crews in Lisbon right now, uh, gathering as much information as possible, knowing that this is all just happening and just underway. We just got confirmation uh, maybe a half an hour ago that this is happening. So. Um, once again, if, if you are just joining us, just tuning in, as Brian mentioned, word is traveling fast, our phones are ringing, and we're working hard to get you everything we know about the discovery of Robert Card's body in Lisbon. Um, and part of it going forward, I, I think, is there are still a lot of questions. There will be a lot of yeah. questions in, in terms of immediacy. Uh, you know, at the briefing this afternoon at 5 o'clock, um, hunting became prohibited. Uh, prohibited, excuse me, in a number of communities. Uh, uh, Lisbon, Monmouth, Bowdoin, I believe. Um, yep. Yep. So part of the question I think tonight will be, will police address that um, mm -hmm. for the start of, of hunting season tomorrow um, for Mainers? Um, that's uh, obviously a, a big industry in our state uh, right. and, and, and a hit to that community as well sure. uh, yeah. to have a restriction on that. So that's also up in the air right now of whether we'll hear any update on that. And, and also, the other kind of emotional aspect that uh, the commissioner had talked about was that if you are in nearby towns and you're hearing gunshots, right. do not jump to conclusions that it may be involved in this case. Just alone, the stress of that, right, right having to think, is this related to that case? That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. And so that to, to have that ease, I guess, that peace of mind tonight that whatever you may hear, be hunting hopefully set some lines at ease. Right. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of activities across the state um, canceled over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, Halloween festivities, Halloween celebrations. Yeah. Of course, kids haven't been to school in, in many communities right. for, for several days. Um, so it, it will also be that idea, I think, that you were talking about earlier, that idea of if you walk outside and even in downtown Portland, um, it was like mm -hmm. the world stood still. Very yeah. Um, so yeah. that perhaps um, we, we can step outside our homes uh, um, and come together again. Mm -hmm. um, we also got word earlier um, in Lewiston uh, that uh, they're planning a vigil on, on Sunday. Um, so this, of course, um, it will be important to right. to their ability to really come together in, in a way and feel safe on Sunday. And speaking of, uh, of people coming together, um, well, I do just want to mention here, we're getting an update that Governor Mills will be at the upcoming press conference uh, in just a few minutes. We do have a crew there giving us updates on the discovery of Robert Card's body, and we just heard that the governor will be there. Um, back to what you were saying about uh, the communities in just gathering for that vigil on Sunday and the ways in which we've seen people come together in, you know, some of the worst times. We highlighted today uh, ways the Lewiston community putting hearts on trees, uh, starting GoFundMe pages for each other, different fundraisers. Even tonight when I was coming back, I passed Longfellow Square and there's candles set up in the middle with Lewiston uh, written, I think, across pumpkins that were either already there. I, I believe it was a pumpkin. Uh, don't quote me on that. I was driving by. but. It's just nice to see that everyone is feeling the weight of this because we are so connected here in Maine. And, and Zach, like you said, we are in Portland, which isn't too far, but you still kind of felt uneasiness as you're walking around because 
everyone was taking this, you know, the way it should be, and, and things were closed, and everyone was at home. And I think, uh, you know, as, as humans, we want to be around others uh, in times of a crisis, yeah. which is why we so often see a vigil pop up right. um, when something uh, tragic happens. And I, uh, that's, I presume, has been part of the challenge for specifically the, the Lewiston community of they were under this shelter in place. Right. Um, so even if folks maybe wanted to gather and get together and, and have that peace, um, it was it was perhaps discouraged by the, the safety concerns. So I imagine we will start to see more of that in addition to uh, what we're hearing about one being organized for Sunday. And the comfort that will bring. Right, yeah. of the time together. Yeah. yeah. To the families of all of those victims you see there on your screen. The youngest, just 14 years old, Aaron Young, um, who was bowling with his father, William, um, at uh, spare time or just in time recreation in Lewiston that night um, when tragedy struck, shots ringing out there. Um, as police say, um, Robert Card entered that building with um, an, an assault weapon um, and unleashed horror and so, uh, on a night that was supposed to be fun. And, yeah. and I don't want to lose sight of that part of this. When right. we came on the air that first night, we were saying that these venues are, are places where people were going after work mm -hmm. um, to let loose a little bit. Some cornhole tournament at Chemin and um, bowling leagues, leagues at, at yeah. uh, spare time. So I did find out about Aaron today from his grandfather that he was passionate about bowling and his coach was actually Bob Violet, mm -hmm. who was oh, also wow. a victim of the shooting. And um, Bob was able to help Aaron improve his scores in the last few years to a point where he was going to try to join a team in his freshman year of high school, which he had just started. Yeah, Bob um, and, and his wife Lucille mm -hmm. um, Bob was 76, uh, Lucille was 73. This is uh, aerial um, video from earlier over uh, the bowling alley there. Uh, Bob Violet's uh, cousin, John, telling us that he was a strong-willed person who loved his kids, his family. He made sure he always put us first. There was never a doubt that he wouldn't take care of us, and I really don't know what I'm going to do without him. So our hearts are going out to them as, as they're likely watching this coverage tonight and, and finding out the news that the man police say um, killed their loved ones um, has been found. There are so many people um, here at New Center, Maine, are Mainers. We grew up here, we know it, um, in a variety of departments, and a few of us were talking uh, earlier today, because uh, everybody has been here, um, and these locations where these shootings happened uh, were go-to places. Yeah. Um, didn't matter your generation of what age you are right now. These are places that people are saying, I bowled there. I mm -hmm. went there as a teenager with my friends. I had a party there. Uh, or uh, growing up an adult, I went and played pool at the yeah. bar. Um, so th these are prominent, long-standing establishments in the Lewiston area. Um, which I think just m makes that connection even stronger for so many people. Um, when the institutions. Yes, the yeah. institutions. And, and when you can picture yourself having been there right. um, and imagining what happened Wednesday night um, is really the part that I think ties so many of us uh, a little closer to the victims and their families of saying, wow, I, I cannot imagine what's, go what, what's going on in your world right now. Right. All right, we're going to turn things over to New Center Maine's Alex Haskell, who is live on that scene in Lewiston, where we are told Robert Card's body was found. Alex, um, we will be prepared to interrupt you here if someone goes to the podium. But for now, can you tell us about the scene there? Exactly, yeah. So right across from the street here, I'll step out of the way so you can get a look yourself. It is Capitol Ave, and it is blocked off right now. But down that road is Main Recycling, and that's where Robert Card's body was found from a self-inflicted gun wound. I was checking out Google Maps to see just how far this road goes, and it goes down for about another half a mile, then loops back around. So there's a lot of road here that we just can't see. I'm doing my best to look down this road. There's some trees in the way, a Walgreens, uh, but I see at least two law enforcement vehicles down there, and it's um, likely that there are even more down there. And we are along the busy Lisbon uh, street right now and I was talking about how a little earlier that this is a much different place compared to where we were yesterday. We were in rural Bowdoin yesterday as law enforcement were coming down on this home where they thought Robert Card might have been at and that of course wasn't the case but here we have a McDonald's in front of me. We have the Walgreens I mentioned. We have a subway. A very different spot and uh, a little while ago we were talking about the deaf community and I'd like to add to that conversation 
and I chatted with uh, a sister whose brother died at Schmengi's. His name was Brian McFarland, and he was a member of the deaf community, and he was there on a night out uh, to play cornhole. A cornhole tournament was happening at the bar and grill, and it was a place his sister tells me uh, Ryan went every Wednesday with the deaf community, and he was very involved. Uh, but I want to toss back to the anchors now. All right, Alex is there in Lisbon um, where the body of Robert Card was found. We are told, um, according to Senator Angus King, that he was found at Maine Recycling Corporation. Uh, there, not far from where Alex was just standing, um, found in the same clothes he was wearing um, the night police say that he opened a fire on a bowling alley. And we are expecting to hear from police on specifics uh, of, of their investigation in just any, mo any moment now. And again, his body was found within hours of the latest briefing we had from police where they were being very clear of uh, you know they talked a lot today about the dive team that was going to be going into the water likely tomorrow because they didn't get to it today because of the grid search and and how time consuming that all is um, but you know police were also very clear of saying th the sun was dropping quickly uh, for their daylight hours to do that and how glad they were that um, the forecast shows us having a sunny morning tomorrow because that would help in the search in the water there um, so it is quite really quite a huge development that to leave that briefing with kind of the anticipation for all of us that we're, we're in for another full day of searching right, um, and then have this discovery just within a few hours of getting that information. Um, but it does make you wonder what they what they did know because that right. shelter in place was lifted, lifted um, and, and, and even last night in that press conference they were saying that they were combing the body, mm -hmm. they were pretty uh, combing the river rather for quote unquote bodies um, possibly. Uh, um, so. Uh, this, of course, um, is a major development, and, and we're looking forward to hearing more details uh, any moment now. Yeah, and even kind of giving some fair warning this morning too. Expect Lisbon to be, uh, you know, a very active area throughout the day. So it will be interesting to hear what they know, what they found out. Chris, did you have something? No, I just. Uh, yeah. One thing that struck me was when we were reading the statement from Senator Collins, we learned something very significant about this mm -hmm. situation, that the president himself knew that the suspect was dead and called Senator Collins to inform her. Yeah, so here's this part of the statement here. This is Senator Collins' statement saying, tonight Mainers can breathe a collective sigh of relief thanks to the brave first responders who worked night and day to find this killer. Uh, when President Biden called me this evening to tell me that the perpetrator of these heinous attacks in Lewiston had been found, we both expressed our profound appreciation for the courage and determination of these brave men and women. The, the statement goes on uh, to, to the families to say who lost loved ones and those injured by the attack. Uh, I know that no words can diminish the shock, pain, and justifiable anger you feel. It is my hope that you will find solace and strength in knowing that you are in the hearts of people throughout Maine and across the nation. Just, I find it interesting that the, the, the attention on this case spans far beyond Maine. We've seen that with all the, the reporting right. that's been going on the news crews that have come here, but it rose all the way to the level of president. And again, wow. I think part of what made this so unique was the uh, not captured part. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So often when we see mass shootings in other parts of the country that we're reporting on, that that's the follow-up line. That there was this mass shooting, a suspect is in custody, or a mass shooting, or a, a suspect is dead. Um, and that was the variable, variable here that um, really changed the storyline right. um, that got so much attention, and obviously that of the White House. And Governor Mills had told us that she had spoken just in the first night when this happened on Wednesday night, twice with the president. Um, so it, it, not surprised, um, uh, but it is interesting that the the White House was so connected to to what's going on right in our home. Yeah, yeah. and going back to Lisbon, and I know mm -hmm. you were there uh, night one, day yeah. one, um, on the scene there uh, when they had really shut down much of that community. Right. Um, what was what was that like? I mean, it was when we first got there, it was extremely active. There was a heavy uh, police presence there, as to be expected. A chopper that was flying over for hours, and it was right near where his body was found. I mean, we were blocked off I, at Lisbon Street. Was blocked off towards if you were headed towards Lisbon Center if people are at home are familiar with the area um, right by the gas station there on the corner and then on the other side it was just about a mile from that gas station and then the next uh, road block so it was kind of included within that blocked off area and so this really has since day one since Robert Card's car was found at that boat launch it has been an area of focus and um, it'll be interesting to hear the new tactics put in place by law enforcement to be able to discover the body of Robert Card this time around right there yeah. um, 
you're seeing a shot right now uh, ahead of the press conference uh, that's expect that was slated for 10 o'clock. We're told the governor is going to be attending. Um, and that's one of the uh, city spokespeople right there behind the podium right now. Mm -hmm. To her left in the black is the American Sign Language interpreter. Yeah. I'm being told that she is a classmate mm -hmm. and coworker of Joshua Seal. Mm -hmm. Wow, and, and she um, and Joshua were both um, interpreters that helped lead us all through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about Maine being a big, small town, this is, this is the example of that. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, was watching in preparation for our, an 11 o'clock newscast tonight, Vivian Lee's package on Joshua. Um, we had done stories with him in the past on that camp and, and got emotional myself as, sure, as yeah. someone um, who we saw um, every time Dr. Shaw uh, uh, took to um, the microphone to, to give us the latest information through the pandemic and all of the victims, 18 of them um, there on your screen. And Joshua is so passionate about helping other people. There he is right there. Um, yeah, this is what we saw so much um, to, to help us get through difficult times uh, and in um, he was slated, as, as Vivian was, was reporting today, slated to do some um, sign language for the vice president yeah. um, before all of this happened. Uh, so very uh, established individual in that community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And four members of, of the deaf community that are, are watching tonight and hearing this news, uh, we've heard from some of them thanking us for including the interpreter in, right. in the, um, uh, the picture on the screen next to the podium because it's important for them to get that information. So just a, another reminder to our crews to, to make sure that we, we stay wide um, to include her in, in this press conference. Mm -hmm. So again, we are waiting. We're uh, about 15 minutes now past the anticipated start time of this press briefing. Um, you can only imagine um, the, uh, the volume of information that our law enforcement leaders are trying to compile and uh, make succinct uh, before coming and sharing uh, all of the information with us uh, about the discovery um, of his body tonight, uh, again in Lisbon. Uh, n near or at uh, where he previously worked mm -hmm. uh, in Lisbon as well. So again, uh, this is the photo you've been looking at now for 48 hours that we've all been looking at, um, kind of with that uh, request from police to say, if you see anything, call us. If you hear anything, call us. Uh, we are getting word, as you can see here, and the governor is taking the podium at Lewiston City Hall. Thank you very much for coming. <coughs> Excuse me, coming here on short notice. I stand here to t tonight to simply report that the main state police have located the body of Robert Card in Lisbon. He is dead. I've called President Biden to inform him about this news. I've informed <coughs> Senator King, Senator Collins, Representative and Representative Golden, Commissioner Sawshuck. We'll describe the circumstances of that discovery in some detail uh, in a few moments. But this discovery is entirely thanks to the hundreds of local, county, state, and federal law enforcement members from all over, and people from other states as well, people who searched <clears throat> tirelessly to arrive at this moment. And on behalf of all Maine people, I want to express, express my profound gratitude for their unwavering bravery and determination and fortitude and for the leadership of Louis, Lewiston Police Chief St. Where'd he go? Right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> Lewiston Police Chief St. Pierre. Like many people, I'm breathing a sigh of relief tonight knowing that that card is no longer a threat to anyone, to anyone. I know there are some people, or many people, who share that sentiment, but I also know that his death may not bring solace to many. But now is a time to heal. And with this search concluded, I know that law enforcement 
continues to fully investigate all the facts so we can bring what closure we can to the victims and their families. And I ask that all Maine people continue to keep those families and all of the people impacted by this tragedy in their thoughts and prayers. Lewiston is a special place. This isn't us. Lewiston is a great place. It's a close-knit community of fine people, people with a long history, a history of hard work, of persistence, of faith, of opening its big heart to people everywhere. And tonight, the city of Lewiston and the state of Maine begin to move forward on what will be a long and difficult road to healing, but we will heal together. Thank you, and again, my deepest gratitude. Gratitude of all the people in the state of Maine, to these wonderful members of law enforcement who came from all over to help us solve this crime and put closure on this investigation. Robert Card is dead. Now I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Sasha. Thank you very much, Governor. We truly do appreciate uh, all of your support. Uh, I think it's incredibly important uh, that the next uh, person that speaks uh, this evening is Lewiston's uh, chief uh, law enforcement champion, and that is Dave St. Pierre. Dave. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and thank you, Governor, for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, bear with me, please. I, I certainly did not have much time to prepare a speech here. Um, I, I want to I say to everybody, thank you so much. You can, our community can now breathe a sigh of relief, as, as the Governor stated, and I can't echo that enough. Um, our work, again, is not done here. Um, uh, I was very elated tonight when I got the call from Commissioner Sawchuk um, advising me of uh, the revelation of what took place and that Mr. Card is deceased and no longer a threat to our community or any other community. Um, I just don't want to forget the, the families that are grieving and will continue to grieve. I don't want to forget the law enforcement officials that have worked tirelessly throughout this whole event uh, to come to a good conclusion. Um, our men and women of the Lewiston Police Department, of all of our surrounding agencies, we have with us uh, Chief McGee here from Lisbon, where, where Mr. Card was found. Um, this is vitally important to all of us that this conclusion came to light tonight. Um, we're going we're gonna to grieve for the families that lost loved ones here. Um, persevere um, and we become better people for it is in, in terms of working together as teams we've learned a lot from some mistakes uh, we've we've won a lot of accomplishments this evening um, again I wasn't really prepared for this on a Friday night at 1030 but I'm very happy to be here and very happy to say the threat is over thank you did you see a reaction from your officers and when they got the news sir, uh, of this you know your officers were working this case Sure, so our officers are being notified now as we speak. Um, some know, obviously, sooner than others. There are many that are still home. They're home with their families. And I'm quite certain at this point in time, we all know about this. Um, this is something that all of our law enforcement uh, personnel, ours and any surrounding community, has been pay paying very close attention to in awaiting positive news or good news. And this is by far the, the best news we've had in, in quite some time. Thank you. Was there, any, was there any belief at this time that the suspect was dead before finding him, or did this come as a brand new revelation that you never saw coming before this? So our reality here is that the search has been extensive, it's been thorough, it's been nonstop since the minute uh, we started speaking with you and long before that. Uh, so all of these options are on the table as we knew. Uh, we continue to search locations. Uh, in some cases, multiple times. Uh, and uh, we will have more information about exactly how this went down. Uh, we're going to have another briefing tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, and I would uh, please encourage you uh, to think about next steps from your end, information that you uh, would find important. Uh, and uh, I will say that this is not going to be a long Q&A this evening. 
uh, we wanted to make sure that we got this information out as fast as possible and as responsible as possible. And what I mean by that is that the time between the notification of the press release and now, there wasn't a lot of details there. There wasn't a lot of details there because we wanted to talk to the victim's families. We wanted to say, this is coming. And it's important that they heard that information as close to first as anybody else. And you know who else we called uh, was the family of the suspect. And so they lost a loved one in this scenario. Um, and there were many of that family that was very cooperative with us throughout. Uh, so they deserve that phone call. So we had those conversations tonight before joining you here. Uh, we also got a chance to send, spend some time uh, with the brothers and sisters of law enforcement and our public safety partners that have been so incredibly helpful uh, over the last few days, uh, to say the least. Any so, other reaction so, for the families, sir? So right here, sir. Where exactly did you find him and when exactly did you find him? So it's 7.45 this evening is when uh, Mr. Carter was located. I won't give you an exact address. It was uh, near uh, the river along Androscoggin uh, in Lisbon Falls was the actual location. Ma'am, did you have a question? Ma'am, did you have a question? Uh, uh, when, do you, when did police think he died? That all remains to be seen, right? So uh, our reality is that we found that body at 7.45 and it's 10.25 now. Uh, so there continues to be a lot of work that needs to be done here at the scene with the medical examiner's office. Uh, so there, there's a much, much more follow-up to what happened. Uh, well, sir, did you have a question? Uh, um, any indication that he had an accomplice and um, how was he found? I won't be able to answer either one of those questions at this point, uh, accomplices and things of, like, of that nature. We've had no indication of that since the very beginning. Uh, but. As we've talked about before, these next steps are going to be, gives us an opportunity to, to do things as fast as we can in the sense that we want to provide closure and information, but also slow things down a little bit uh, because we need to look at video evidence, we need to look at the uh, various uh, pieces of technology that are in uh, play here, and hopes that that gives us some additional information around some of the things that you're going to Can you show the reaction yes, from family members, please? We, we understand that he was found at the Sacramento Center working at previously. Well, can you help us understand more? Had you searched previously this recycling Center and not found anything? And, and in addition to that, we understand that possibly he may have recently been fired from this recycling Center. Can you yeah, I'm happy to take a look at that information in, in hopes that I can get that back to you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, again, we have uh, uh, attorney generals that we need to work with and other individuals uh, that are in play here. I'm going to take a couple more questions sure. again, again sure. with the mindset that it's, that it's 10 o'clock tonight. And we do want to come back uh, tomorrow morning. Have a second question. We moved at the shelter in place this afternoon. So by this afternoon, were you just looking for remains? Or, you know, how did you make that decision to lift the shelter in place? Yeah, sure. So I think that um, that was an ongoing conversation since the minute we uh, actually put that in place. Uh, we knew that that was an important decision. Certainly from our perspective, it made uh, complete sense to put that order in place immediately based on the violent nature and the traumatic nature of these crimes. Uh, and as uh, things progressed over the next few days, uh, since Wednesday to now, uh, we've had a lot of conversations with uh, various town and city leadership, uh, with the governor's office, with Chief St. Pierre, with business owners, with residents, and we have to have that balancing act of pluses and minuses. And we had that initial surge with those communities, uh, and those communities made perfect sense for an order, and as things tended to slow down, we didn't have any immediate threats, we made the decision to, to back off that. I would also just want to mention this because uh, a fellow commissioner had asked me to do this, uh, and I could walk out of here forgetting it, but uh, Commissioner uh, Camuso said that, uh, and passed along, that actually that hunting restriction uh, has been lifted as well. So the resident hunting opportunity um, for tomorrow uh, is open across the state of Maine to include those four communities with a lot of phone calls that she would receive around that. But right here, there, um, there are reports that he was found with a self inflicted gunshot wound. Can you confirm that? Yes, I can confirm that. It's an apparent self inflicted gunshot wound. Commissioner? Yes, I'm sorry, I just wanted to follow up. You've searched that area before, as I understand it. Can you explain why he was only found at this other time that you uh, searched this area? I didn't state that we well, accept that. No, 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 no,
search this area before. I, okay. So just to follow I was there as yesterday as and we were searching. As, search. we have, as we have stated in the past, we try to use information that we can confirm one way or the other. So your reporting can say something well, one way or the other, and that's fine. We can talk about that again tomorrow morning. But I think we're done taking questions for this evening. Thank you very much for your patience. Yes, yes, what, what was in the suicide notes? Okay, we're all set. We're all done. Okay, we're 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 You've been watching uh, the latest briefing there from Lewiston City Hall. Uh, we heard from Governor Janet Mills, um, the head of uh, the commissioner of the Department of Public Safety, confirming uh, what we had learned from Senator Angus King earlier in the night um, that Robert Card's body was found. Um, he is dead, as the governor also pointed out, um, from um, a suspected self-inflicted gunshot wound. And I imagine that's terminology that is often used because, uh, you know, when someone is found dead, they are taken to the medical examiner's office and there's an official yes. um, cause of death determined. But at this point, uh, police say all indications are it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Right, and we know that his body, again, found just barely a mile from where they found his car at that boat launch there in Lisbon um, at Main Recycling Center there. And um, I, you can tell kind of a different mood in the room there tonight. Very different, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Governor Mills um, sharing remarks. Um, I'm not sure if we have that sound yet, but basically saying that the state can begin to move forward um, while we have a long, difficult road. We will heal together. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can you can feel the energy in the room. You heard um, uh, uh, Chief St. Pierre sharing as well that we can breathe a, a sigh of relief. No longer, uh, Robert Carr is no longer a threat to the community or any community. You could see that relief relief on their faces, specifically the governor when she took the podium, I thought. Yesterday morning when she took the podium at 10 a.m., she addressed the fact that her voice was sore. She had been up all night the night before talking, communicating, coordinating all of this. Um, and she, you could tell she had been up all night, as they all had been. Um, and that, that look of relief on her face tonight um, was very noticeable, um, I think, in the room. It was. You're right. And um, and actually, I apologize for joining you guys late because I, I live kind of a ways away. But um, on my drive in, coming in from Gray, I get on the highway, and I had 13 cruisers pass mm. me from Massachusetts. Wow. You could see them all just driving mm. out of state. They've done their job. Yeah. yeah. They, that they did what was needed, what we needed of them. Um, as a state in this moment. Yeah, more yeah. than 350 officers was, was the last number we were told, many of them going home after what has been a grueling three days um, trying to analyze all these scenes, doing that grid search earlier today. Um, you had the search of the home last night, or the, they surrounded that home last night, I should say, and then searching the river. Uh, I do want to listen to the sound from Governor Mills uh, that, that we have uh, from that press conference just moments ago. I stand here t t tonight to simply report that the Maine State Police have located the body of Robert Card in Lisbon. He is dead. I've called President Biden to inform him about this news. So the governor um, being in touch with President Biden, President Biden delivering the news to her and uh, the members of Maine's congressional delegation as well this evening. Um, we, we've heard from, from a number of people um, sharing that, that this is a moment um, to collectively breathe a sigh of relief uh, um, and begin that long and difficult process to heal. You heard the commissioner say that it, uh, there are lots of details about what exactly happened between him taking off them finding the car and then them finding him dead, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened in that time. The investigators are looking into it. A lot of people right now are going to ask us, well, why aren't you saying this? Why aren't you saying that? Right. Because those are details that, as the commissioner said, those are details that they need to communicate to the families mm -hmm. if, if they so choose to hear them. Uh, but, it's a, but it's a process of respect from law enforcement to make sure that they're hearing it from them as an official source first, as opposed to something coming from Anybody else? Right, and Commissioner Soschuk, um said that he actually called the family of, of Robert Card and right, told right. them, and he acknowledged that um, they themselves are, are dealing with the loss of someone tonight. So some complicated emotions there. Um, again, uh, we, if you're just joining us here on the air, we have learned um, that the uh, shooter um, in that Lewiston shooting that killed 18 people, injured 13 others, has been found dead in Lisbon. Uh, New Center Marines Alex Haskell was there on that scene. I, I'm not sure if Alex is ready to talk to us, but it would be great to get an idea of what is going on there. Alex?
All right, looks like we don't have Alex's audio right now. We will work on that and get back to him. We will. Oh, here we go. We have Alex now. Hey guys, sorry about that. So yep, we are in Lisbon Falls, right behind me here. That's Capitol Ave, and that's where main recycling is, and that's where Robert Carr's body was found. That road is blocked off right now. We have two members of law enforcement with Lisbon police there, and this is a, a busy area, and we've seen it get busier as the news has gotten out that this is where Robert Carr's body has been found. We are right by a McDonald's right in front of me here, and we've seen people take a break from their meals to look out the windows to see what's happening and it's quite the sight as all news media comes here to, to check out this site. We've seen a couple vehicles pull out of Capitol Ave uh, and head out but other than that there's not too much happening. Another uh, development is that there's a helicopter here but uh, it's just been circling around. Other than that uh, it's been pretty quiet here but uh, it is Capitol Ave behind us on the busy stretch of Lisbon Street. Uh, much different from where we were yesterday in a rural part of Maine in Bowdoin that we've been talking about, that that's, uh, there was a home there where law enforcement thought Robert Cards was. Uh, obviously, that turned out not to be true. He was here at Maine Recycling, uh, where he was found with a uh, uh, self-inflicted gun wound. And I typed it into my phone. We are about two minutes from a boat launch, and that's where uh, authorities have been spending much of their time getting into the Androscoggin River searching for Robert Card, but uh, I was looking on my phone and Capitol Ave behind me, it goes down about half a mile and that's where main recycling is and it's very close to the Androscoggin River. So all kind of connected here, but uh, that is what's happening here right now, guys. Alex Haskell live for us there in Lisbon Falls. Thank you, Alex. And he mentioned, you know, the, the residents that they were at in Bowdoin police um, executing search warrants on a couple of residences out there. And we do know they told us this morning that they found a note in one of those homes. And so you can bet over the coming days there will probably be more information that we learn as this investigation continues. Yes, because there are, are a lot of emotions for not only the families of the victims, but the family of law enforcement, uh, of healthcare professionals, mm -hmm. of, of really everyone in this state tonight. Um, and and the, the question remains why? Um, right. and, and I think people are going to be asking that for some time. So if you take a look at this map here, Alex referenced just how close it is. Uh, you can see in the center of your screen, that's the main recycling corporation, the company where Senator Angus King telling us um, that uh, Card used to work just uh, about a couple minutes drive from where his car, that white Subaru, was found at the boat ramp and, and where earlier today they were they were combing the river um, for uh, what police had worded as quote-unquote bodies um, and didn't find anything there, but ultimately just hours later um, found Card's body at that recycling center. Uh, and also I want to point out not only the proximity to that boat launch, um, but how far away from the original scene. Um, we're talking about uh, 12 miles away. You can kind of see too here on the map between Car Found and Main Recycling Corporation. Um, police have mentioned there is a walkway, um, sort of like a walking path along along the water there. I also believe um, Brooke Griffin is with us. She is also in Lisbon tonight with a kind of a different perspective um, from where we just saw Alex Haskell. Uh, Brooke, what can you share with us about what is happening on, on your part of the scene tonight? Yeah, so this area has actually gotten pretty busy. This is right at the McDonald's. I can actually see Alex from where I am now, but we're on the other side. We can show you a little bit further down into that scene. Actually, look, there are some police going in right now. We've seen them with their lights on moving down to that area. That's much, much closer to that scene. We're not exactly right where they supposedly found Robert Card's body around 745 this evening. That is a little bit further down, so you can see that there are a lot of police here. There's lights. There's no sign sirens. There's no really sense of urgency or anything imminent happening right now. That's not been the case in different times throughout the past couple of days. Obviously, last night there in Bowdoin, very imminent. There were bear cats. There were dozens, if not hundreds of law enforcement officers at that scene. This one is a little bit different. There's actually another uh, police officer about to come by here. He's been here for a few minutes now at this point, so it's it's active. There is a lot going on here, but it's not as urgent or as persistent as it has been over the past uh, 48, 50 hours or so. Now, one thing I do want to mention is we're here at the McDonald's on uh, Lisbon Street in Lisbon Falls. Now, 
there's actually a lot of onlookers that are in this parking lot. I don't know if we can actually turn around at this point. Um, we're going to try. These are not all news people. These are just random citizens here to look and see what's going on. This is something that has been horrifying for this community. We've shown you it. We're feeling it. We've talked to these people. There's a lot of emotions running as these people are finding out that the person that put such horror on their community is now dead. So there are people here. They've actually they've gotten McDonald's. They've gone through the drive through. They're just standing here watching the media, watching the police. There's helicopter circling overhead right now. One thing I do also want to mention a lot of strong words made in that presser. Now, we are still waiting to hear the details on how exactly Robert Card was found, where exactly he was found at this point. That's something that we're going to find hopefully at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We actually, as reporters, were told to quote, have your questions ready whenever we arrive tomorrow morning so that everything is organized and structured. That's been a big thing for those Lewiston and state leaders as of about 10 o'clock this morning. They've been trying to promote structure am amongst the chaos that's been going on. But I want to tell you, if you missed the beginning of that press conference, exactly how Governor Janet Mills started that press conference. She started with, quote, Robert Card is dead. They got right to it. That was the information that we've been waiting to hear for days, happening apparently right down the street at that main recycling center area that he may have worked at one point. So this is a sigh of relief. A lot of reporters, even whenever I was looking around, it looked like everyone kind of looked around, you know, to see how people were reacting. This is a big deal. It's a much different mood than it was even a few hours ago here in this exact spot whenever I was here earlier. And it's going to be a different spot, I'm sure, developing over the next 12 or so hours. Griffin, live for us tonight. Thank you, Brooke. Um, and, and, you know, a sigh of relief is something we keep hearing. We've heard it from Senator Susan Collins. We've heard it from Governor Mills. Um, and and uh, certainly many people feel that way. But I think a lot of people, too, still just feel this heaviness. Um, we have spoken to family members of, of some of the victims here tonight, and um, many of them say they just feel awful. Um, and I think it's going to take a, it's going to be a long time of, of feeling that awful. That it is. It's, it's just the beginning of, of a really long process right. for them. Um, on a good note is that this um, shelter in place has been lifted. You saw even in, in the background of both Brooke and Alex's shot that, that cars were moving, people were milling about. And I mentioned earlier that uh, there are plans for a vigil in Lewiston, and I'm sure that's going to be a really, really tough, tough yeah. time for a lot of people to come together in that moment. But usually you see that day of, and right. I think it's up uh, for a lot of people, um, everyone grieves differently, but is an important part of that process. Um, so that vigil, um, hopefully will will be a tiny bit easier given uh, that Robert Card has been found. Mm -hmm. And our Jack Mulmid, um, we know, is live in Lewiston. He's with uh, Lewiston Mayor Carl Shaleen and, and a Lewiston City Councilor, Jack. Hey, that's right, Amanda. I am here live outside City Hall where we just got done with a press conference that, um, you know, really ultimately ended this long-lasting search over um, Robert Card, the alleged gunman um, who reportedly shot and killed 18 people here in Lewiston, set a wave of national media here, sent an absolute tragedy onto our community. Still families working to grieve the loss of those loved ones. It was kicked off by Governor Janet Mills, who then tossed it over to um, Department of Safety Commissioner Soschuk and then brought it over to Lewiston Police Department uh, Chief David St. Pierre. Speaking of Lewiston, we do have several city leaders with us. Um, I'm going to bring in City Councilor Scott Harriman, who was there and also, I believe, just like dozens of families, hundreds of families, thousands of families throughout the state anxiously waiting the outcome of this. Um, when did you find out and how do you feel now that the suspect was found dead? Um, just greatly relieved, really. Uh, it's been really a, a hard couple of days for Lewiston and the surrounding area, and hopefully everyone can sleep a little bit better tonight. Did you walk in, when you were walking through today, this morning, um, going on to day two or three of this search now, um, what was going through your mind? Did you ever feel a sense of hopelessness? It was getting a little bit that way, you know, where it had been this long. Um, things I've been hearing on the news are that this is pretty unusual for a, a manhunt um, for it to go on this long. So uh, I was just a little worried that that we would never find him, you know, for quite a while, and everyone would have to live on edge. Um, so it's it's really relieving. 
And so Governor Mills opened up her speech talking about how um, the body of Robert Card was found. Um, Commissioner Soschuk later clarified his body was discovered at 745 um, near the river along the Androscoggin River in Lisbon Falls. Um, now, Governor Mills said that she hopes that we can begin to move forward on what will be a long and difficult road to healing. Um, for a city councilor, what does that road look like? I know that's a huge question, but what are your thoughts going into the future now of rebuilding? I think generally just um, making sure that we we remember that we're one big community here um, and we all need to help each other out and um, just be kind in everything that we do. Awesome. Thank you so much, Councillor. We really appreciate your time. Um, thank you for pa waiting patiently. As all of you watching at home have been waiting patiently for any updates we have had um, from law enforcement over the search for the suspected gunman who claimed the lives of 18 people. I want to bring in now, um, hopefully if he's around, Mayor Carl Shaleen, who has also been patiently waiting just as we all have. Mayor Shaleen, I'm going to have you step a little bit into the light here um, and join me. Um, again, we are, we are bringing you live to News Center, Maine, talking about um, your reaction to what happened. Um, tell me, what are your thoughts right now heading into after we're hearing this press conference that the body of the suspect was discovered in Lisbon Falls? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm incredibly uh, relieved and uh, incredibly thankful uh, to Lewiston uh, Police, Maine State Police, and all the other agencies uh, and everyone who worked on this tirelessly, tirelessly over the past few days. Um, as mayor of the city of Lewiston, what has that feeling been like knowing that the 10th largest mass shooting in U.S. history has descended upon your town, your city of 40,000 people these past 48, 55 hours. Um, I can't imagine what that's like as a leader to be thinking of right now. You know, the, the violence that happened this past uh, Wednesday was incredibly tragic, um, but Lewiston is a very strong city. We're resilient, um, and uh, I had no doubt that we were going to get through this. Definitely. Um, Mayor, uh, for people watching right now, um, fear uh, was a way to describe it at the very least throughout these last uh, few days here. Um, now that the body has been found for this suspect, what's your message to people who are watching, families specifically? We know that one of the victims in this gun violence was a 14-year-old at the bowling alley with his father. Um, absolute horrific tragedy. What's your message to families watching? Um, yeah, I, I mean, our, our city are, is incredibly broken for the victims and their families, and um, I'm glad that now we can begin the healing process. And I'm sure we all are uh, really glad that we could begin this healing process on just this tragedy that's fallen in our community. Is there anything else you want to say to the people watching? Uh, I appreciate uh, everything uh, that the residents of Lewiston uh, have done. It's been incredibly, um, uh, I've been incredibly proud of our city over the past few days uh, and the love that our residents have shown for each other. Sounds good, Mayor. We appreciate your time. Again, you guys were hearing from Mayor Carl Shaleen um, from his reaction after we just had a press conference where Governor Mills opened up saying that they did discover the body of the suspected gunman who shot and killed 18 people here in Lewiston. Largest mass shooting of this year, 10th largest mass shooting in the nation's history. Lots of work to pick up the pieces of what's left here, um, but we do know that a piece of this puzzle um, you know, has, has come together tonight. And we, for those families watching, um, you know, knowing it's gonna be interesting to see their reactions um, over these next several weeks here, next coming days over what's happened here. But for now, um, we are still waiting to hear more information also because police did leave off by saying they hope to host something um, in the coming days where we could be asking more Q&A about their search efforts leading up to finding the body of Robert Card. Again, he was found around 745 this evening along the Androscoggin River in Lisbon Falls. Commissioner Soschuk said he was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound and pretty soon after the next couple of hours, they said that they informed the family members. They also informed the family of Robert Card as well before bringing that information to the media here tonight. Um, still lots of questions um, leading up to the search effort and also lots of concerns and questions about what happens afterward. For now, we're live in Lewiston. We'll throw it back to you guys, Brian and Amanda. Jack Mulvid, uh, live outside Lewiston City Hall tonight where we did just have that briefing from um, the governor and law enforcement ab about the discovery of Robert Card's uh, body tonight, uh, speaking with the mayor and a member of the council there. Um, also, each of them reflecting on the appreciation of their community um, mm -hmm. and how um, kind of the decorum of their community has been for the, the last 24 hours, uh, 24 hours, uh, managing just the shock, I think, and the terror of what happened in their in their home um, and the fear of the unknown that this uh, gunman was out there, not in, in custody, um, and then just the need to, to heal now and move forward and, and figure out what their community does next. You know, um, 
If you don't feel comfortable answering up, you don't have to. You guys are both from here and not far from Lewiston. What has this been like for you guys to try to do this job here now while the people you know, the places you've worked, those people are grieving? Well, I, th I think the biggest thing is the, the opportunity to connect uh, more genuinely with with our viewers and, and that community of, um, you know, having walked those streets and having been in those stores and, uh, and very familiar with the, the culture and the life and the energy of Lewis and Auburn uh, that is just its uh, own unique part of the state. I think it's I think it's sad to see something like this happen anywhere in the state of Maine. But but yeah, yeah there is something about it being your community that um, it definitely hits a little closer to home. And I think we've all had moments where this has been difficult to report on because this is our our home, and um, it's been difficult to see our neighbors hurting, hurting. so much. Right. Hey, I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, I, I just said to I, say I, I I I have a friend from college who is, is um, Lewiston native. Excuse me. We went to college together in Boston. She ended up moving out to Chicago, then moved back here to Maine to Wyndham, and then just recently in December moved back to Lewiston. So she's back in her hometown for less than a year and something like this happened. Um, and she just wrote me, I, I'll pull it up at some point, but she just wrote me a really, you know, kind of difficult text message from earlier in the day of kind of what she was dealing with, this complex combination of emotions between um, you know, feeling that sense of community with all the people who are grieving, um, but also that fear, also that anger, that frustration. Um, you know, it's, this, is a, this is a very complicated process for everybody, I imagine. You know, the sense of community you mentioned, and um, the mayor just spoke a little bit about it as well. Now that this shelter in place has been lifted, that community can, can finally be together again. Um, it's because there was such an emphasis on please stay home, right. please stay safe, um, and there, I think there's an isolation perhaps with that, um, of, of not course. being able to of course. share in those moments. There's an added level of fear, I think, with, with that shelter in place for a lot of people with this. Of course, and just to reset the scene for you, um, if we have live pictures of that scene um, in Lisbon Falls, uh, where the body of Robert Card has been found. He's the man police say walked into Spare Time Bowling Alley in Lewiston on Wednesday night and opened fire before moving on to Schemendi's Bar and Grill, um, where he killed 18 people and injured 13 others. His body found at Maine Recycling Corporation, a place we're told that he used to work in, in the same clothes he was wearing that evening um, of the shooting. There's still a lot of questions. Uh, police telling us they've found a note in a home in, in Bowdoin, um, obviously not far, the scene not far away from where his, his car was discovered very early on uh, at that boat ramp in Lisbon. Uh, so we are still working to get more information for you. Um, but I, I want to hear what Governor Mills had to say at the, at the very start of that press conference just a little while ago. All right, looks like looks like we don't have you that know, sound for you mean, just yet. In the meantime, Zach, you spoke with Robert Card's sister-in-law earlier today, and, and we know that police called them to let them know um, that they had lost someone as well in this but but her sense was very much apologetic to the community and yeah that it was um, and you could hear it in her voice that this has been a hard time for them she was saying that they've been trying as hard as they can to cooperate with police you heard in that press conference that Commissioner Soschuk said the family has been very cooperative uh, throughout the investigation allowing them to search their properties in Bowdoin where we saw police swarming that home last night uh, she admitted that she, they want this to be over just as much as everyone um, and, and that sh they want the focus to no longer be on them and, 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 and on Robert. They want it to be on those victims. Uh, let's listen to what Governor Mills had to say just moments ago. Again, my deepest gratitude, gratitude of all the people of the state of Maine, to these wonderful members of law enforcement who came from all over to help us solve this crime and put closure on this investigation. Robert Card is dead. 
That was Janet Mills there um, in that press conference announcing that Robert Card was found dead. Um, she, like many people, uh, sharing sentiments that this, of course, is, is a big moment in this really, really difficult time. And now that he has been found, now that that has come to a conclusion, the focus here on, on the lives lost, you know, these people had really big impacts on their communities. And, you know, we've heard from family members. We heard from um, the brother of Bill Young today. He and his son Aaron were among those killed at Spare Time Recreation. And, and, and frankly, Bill had, um, you know, Bill was very frank, or, or the brother was, was very frank about what he had to say. And, and at the end of it, we heard him say, I, may God have mercy on him because I don't. That, and that, I think that well. speaks to the very raw emotion that um, so many families, but certainly the 18 you see in front of you right here, mm -hmm. are going through, um, including the fact that um, of those 18, two families lost two people. Um, we have William and Aaron Young, uh, and Robert and Lucille Violet. Um, so a father and son. A father and son, um, and, and, and a husband, husband and, and wife, wife um, d died together that night. Um, yeah, and Hannah Cumler was actually saying earlier that she spoke to family of the Youngs, and and that um, Bob was actually helping William Young uh, in, in bowling, and mm -hmm. that he loved to bowl, and and that he was becoming a better bowler because of him. Um, so so those families very much intertwined. Uh, I cannot imagine what they're going through tonight. It's because so it's still very difficult. Um, even, even though this has happened, um, they are still deeply, deeply grieving. And it also speaks to that uh, a number of these individuals who lost their lives were friends. They were together that night. Um, this was not a, a group of strangers who did not know each other. Um, yeah. Many of them likely knew each other, and we specifically know of, of those few, um, but they were there together. Uh, we also heard, you know, from the superintendent of schools from Lewiston that Lucy Violet, uh, not only had she worked for the district for more than 52 years, a uh, member of the business office, but she also was a mentor for many, uh, from youth bowling, life mentoring, and so much more. Um, and their son Tom uh, works for the Lewis, Lewiston School District. I guess the point being, right, as you mentioned, these are groups of people who are all connected, they all know each other, um, and obviously all of them uh, a connection to kids and serving the community. Our Vivian Lee earlier today spoke with um, friends and family of, of Joshua Seal, the man you see here. Let's, let's take a listen to Vivian. A beloved American Sign Language interpreter who was the voice and face of Maine's deaf community during the pandemic. We pray for those who were injured. Because of those abilities, so Josh had been tapped for distance interpreting for Vice President Kamala Harris over the past two years. Well, yesterday morning for VP Harris, uh, because we just uh, weren't available. So, and, and of course, her team completely understood. Noel Sullivan is the CEO of Pine Tree Society, where Josh served as the Director of Interpreting Services. He led a team that provided interpreting for deaf and hard of hearing Mainers throughout the state, from funerals to medical appointments. Sullivan says Josh had a passion for making a difference for his community. And Josh did not lead with, um, I, I, I want to be a good manager. He led with, I want to be good for the deaf community. <laughs> So. His wife Elizabeth Seal posted to Facebook that her husband and father to their four children was a fantastic father. Quote, he loved his family and always put them first. This is what he will be always remembered for. Josh is also leaving behind a legacy to help break the isolation for deaf students at an early age. Two years ago, he helped found Camp Dirigo. The week-long experience held at Pine Tree Camp in Rome brings together deaf youngsters from across the state, where they learn to communicate and trust each other through various activities. A vision he explained to New Center, Maine, just this past August. This opportunity to spend time with, play with, learn sign language from each other is such an amazing experience. Sullivan says Josh's efforts to make life better for deaf kids will live on, not only in the summer, but possibly in the winter too, teaching kids to ice fish, providing life-changing experiences and friendships they can turn to for the rest of their lives. In Scarborough, Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine. And this right here 
Go ahead, Chris. I didn't mean to cut you off. That, that's Governor Janet Mills hugging uh, another interpreter, Reagan Thibodeau. Uh, she went to school with some of the victims as well as Josh Seal being her co-worker. So her uh, getting a hug from Janet Mills tonight. She was one of the people along with Josh who helped navigate Maine uh, and Maine's deaf community through the COVID-19 pandemic uh, during the daily briefings with Dr. Nirav Shah. Yeah, so you often saw them in that split screen um, with Dr. Shah every single day at, uh, and navigating us through a really tough time for Maine. Um, and you can tell uh, that this is this is impacting um, both of both of them um, just because of that connection alone. An emotional few days in that city um, and the surrounding communities, and and it will continue to be an emotional few days beyond. Yeah, and, and it goes to that idea, we've said it over and over and over again, Maine being a big, small town. Um, we're all connected, connected in one way or another, even just having watched uh, Joshua um, in those briefings uh, and, and he helping so many people. Uh, and someone who also echoed that sentiment was uh, Chief uh, Lewiston Police Chief St. Pierre um, earlier in that briefing can now breathe a sigh of relief as, as the governor stated and I can't echo that enough. Um, our work again is not done here. Um, I, I was very elated tonight when I got the call from Commissioner Sawchuk um, advising me of uh, the revelation of what took place and that Mr. Card is deceased and no longer a threat to our community. Uh, Chief Dave St. Pierre there with Lucen PD. Just to go back to Joshua Seal for a minute. Um, we had reached out to Dr. Narav Shah to see if he'd like to speak with us about um, his memories of Josh, but he did tweet. He opted not to speak with anybody on camera, but he did write a message saying, uh, just as you were just saying, Zachary, uh, here's the thing about Maine. It's a small town with very long driveways, and as a result, many Mainers will know someone impacted. Uh, one of the victims was my friend and colleague, Josh Seal. He was a fixture at the COVID briefings. He's an ASL interpreter and the literal voice and face of the COVID response for the deaf community in Maine and beyond. He was a consummate professional who helped all of us navigate through a tough period. Yeah, um, indeed, and, and so many of these statements are being shared, right, um, from uh, people all across the state, all across the country. Um, we have members of Maine's congressional delegation weighing in about what this moment means. Um, Senator King uh, just releasing this statement. Tonight I join my neighbors and friends in a communal sense of relief. We are grateful to law enforcement and first responders for 50 hours of nonstop dedication and determination that brought us this relief. Going on to say it will take a long, long time to process this pain, but Maine people have grit, resolve, and heart, and we will come together through this difficult grieving period and hope for brighter, calmer days. That was Senator Angus King. And, and to hear from Congressman Jared Golden, we know he's from that area. Um, he, we saw him just that briefly at, at yes, that press briefing. conference with uh, the delegation there. And, and he did have some very poignant words at the podium yesterday, but he also saying, um, you know, with the news that the murderer responsible for Wednesday's shooting has been found dead, the people of Lewiston and surrounding communities can feel safe that this threat has ended. I know we will all continue to pray for and care for the families who have lost loved ones, for the wounded, and for the survivors who experienced this terrible shooting. This is a time for mourning the loss of life and to honor the memory of each one of these members of our greater community. Also expressing his thanks to all of the agents who responded and to the EMT medical professionals who um, really came together during this. And Congressman Golden also making that statement yesterday, again speaking at Lewiston City Hall, saying um, he will meet any of his peers um, to have a conversation about uh, legislation um, and if change is needed um, in how guns are uh, regulated in our country. Um, and th that was a big statement for him to make that um, he's, he's saying, I'm at the table now, meet me. Um, and, and putting it out there to his colleagues. And a big reversal for him saying that he will in fact um, look to ban assault weapons, um, which he had previously um, voted against proposals to do just that. So. We have our Sam Rogers who is um, Actually, are you in Lewiston? Yeah, it looks like you're in Lewiston. Hi, Sam. Yeah, hey, Amanda. Just want to kind of give everyone, uh, you back at the studio and everyone at Maine, just kind of a 
peel back behind the scenes of what Jack Momad and Derek Thayer, our photographer, experienced inside uh, Lewiston City Hall during that press conference. Jack and I getting out of the car, walking in, two city councilors out front. They looked at us both. This was when we had a very good understanding, hearing from our sources that this was an announcement that police found the body of Robert Card. We walked in, they looked at us, gave us a thumbs up and said, we finally got some good news. And that was pretty much the, the sense of the vibe that we got in the city council chambers. Uh, I, I couldn't get an exact count. It looked like almost all of the Lewiston city councilors, uh, uh, at least the majority of them were there. Of course, Governor Mills. And it was for the first time we've seen law enforcement and state officials smiling since this all came and started to unwind on Wednesday night. And, and just to kind of back up, I know Hannah Cumler was saying, uh, as you guys got on the air around 10 o'clock, that, that we were in the Lisbon Falls area Wednesday night. It was almost 48 hours to that point. We, when we were right on that stretch of road on Lisbon Street, when we were there, it seems like it's been a, uh, a surreal, you know, two plus days. And just to kind of bring things back, um, to, to City Hall because we did speak with the Lisbon Chief of Police, uh, Ryan McGee, and, and we didn't get him on camera or anything, but as we walked by him going into the council chambers, he just said he was relieved. He's so thankful for his officers and all the hard work that they've done. Uh, we told him that, that, you know, Jack and I and all of our field crews, all the field crews around the country that are here, we're thankful for them for their work, not only in the manhunt to find Robert Carter, uh, but, but to keep everyone in the community and in the press safe. And that is kind of the another theme here, press still hanging around. I counted at least 13 different crews around City Hall. Uh, again, just such a big sigh of relief. Um, and then just kind of on my phone, as we've been talking, the, the UMaine system sending out a text uh, uh, alert alerting everyone in that campus system of the news uh, I'm sure you guys mentioned but all of our phones seem to, to light up and make alarms at once uh, that was the statewide alert to let everyone know that the suspect had been found um, and, and guys I know there's a lot of you back at the desk but it, again you know after being in the in the field for so long the adrenaline was, has been keeping us going and when that starts to crash down that's when we look to the next chapter of this story, which is how we as a city in Lewiston, as a community, as a country, kind of get together. And it starts with, of course, con consoling the victims, uh, their families, and everybody involved in it. But now it's, I, I think, a relief. We kept hearing that word that we're on to the next chapter here. Yeah, and Sam, um, I, I want you to stay with us for a little bit. We were just showing si uh, footage, rather, aerial footage of the scene in Lisbon Falls where Robert Card's body was found, and you were not far from there, uh, just about a two-minute drive away at that boat ramp today where police were really honing in uh, their search. Uh, can, can you talk about kind of what the effort was like there today? Yeah, uh, Zach, well, uh, just just first, as I'm sure you've, you've mentioned, and in that... In that uh, press conference, uh, the, the Commissioner of the Public Safety, law enforcement will be kind of continuing that investigation, hopefully getting more details about the circumstances of finding the body, because as you pointed out, not just myself and Jacob Richards, they are a photographer, but we had crews in that exact area. Again, it, we're not talking about a long stretch of road. We've repeated it time and time again from where Lisbon High School was to where the press uh, staging area was, was about two miles so we, there were think about how many cameras how many officers how many other agencies were patrolling and driving by that stretch since Wednesday night so uh, of course we were in that area it was very active in the morning it slowed down in the afternoon and evening and again we're hoping to get more information about what led law enforcement to go to this facility around 745 and ended up finding the body because again there was at least 30 cameras and reporter crews, all the law enforcement in the Lisbon area on the water and boats. We had confirmed that there were three dive teams preparing to search the water, helicopters overhead. Um, and, and again, I was, I was speaking with some folks back at the station when we got back tonight, and that two hour stretch from about 10 a.m. to noon, right by that boat launch in Lisbon, that was the busiest time I think that I've experienced in, the, in this whole manhunt. And uh, again, it, it took until 7.45 tonight for law enforcement to find the body.
And Sam, sorry to keep bugging you with questions here, but you have a, kind of a unique perspective where you are because you have been at every single scene. All of these scenes have been very active since Wednesday night. You've you've been at each one. Last night you were in Bowdoin with our Alex Haskell, and you kind of gave us a glimpse of of just the amount of of presence with the reporters and photographers from all over the world at this point um, coming into Maine. This is a this is a big thing here in Maine. And it's been a little overwhelming, I think, for some of these small communities. Um, can you speak on that a little? Yeah, and Amanda, I actually have a perfect anecdote. Um, full disclosure, my girlfriend is in another city in the country right now, a, a popular major city. She was at a bar uh, when this press conference was starting and sent a picture. The live stream coverage of this press conference was played at the bar. Again, this was not in New England. This is across the country that just kind of goes to show the attention that we have seen uh, and speaking candidly to a couple sources within law enforcement they did say it was a bit much uh, of course because if you think about it for all the mainers out there listening when there's big breaking news in the portland area there's three television stations in bangor there's there's also three and today at every scene at every uh, media gaggle is what we call it in the industry when a law enforcement officer or a politician walks up and everyone just throws uh, microphones uh, as close to them as possible Possible, it was circled around them and I think that was a bit I think on the inside maybe a little overwhelming but again credit to our law enforcement and public safety officials for for handling all the requests and everything that's going on again as I as I said a few minutes ago some crews are starting to pack up now um, but if you have ever been inside a, a city hall or city council chambers that room is not that big I couldn't get an exact count on how many cameras were there but for context on that podium if you're looking at the podium shot where the governor led things off Jack and I were kind of ducking in the front it was totally packed in a lot of attention of course here in Maine Mainers wanting to check in on on everybody that they know especially if they know folks in the Lewiston area but again this the national uh, support for Maine I think it's something that we've seen and I know uh, Chris and I have talked about this too but you know just the Boston Bruins with the Lewis and Strong jersey hanging up on the glass the other night, the, how, the sticker helmets, every professional sports team in the New England area sharing their condolences. Uh, I think we're going to start to see uh, maybe some more tributes soon. Again, not just here in Maine as we begin to move forward. Uh, we had a shot up earlier. I don't, I don't know if you were able to take it, but the, the light tower, bell tower here at City Hall has been illuminating blue. That Lewis and Strong theme. It may start with just one light bulb, but I think it's going to spread throughout the state and guys, I think really throughout the country. Yeah, that it will. And as those national news crews head out, um, we will be staying here. Um, we will continue to tell this story for as long as it takes um, and continue to tell the story of those 18 victims. And that's really kind of where the conversation goes now. Um, we, w we want to share a statement we just received from the family of Max Hathaway. Uh, Max was 35 years old. He died at Smenji's Bar and Grill this week. Um, and and I, I just want to share the full statement with you. Uh, they say we are finding it difficult to find the words to accurately articulate the sudden loss we feel of Max in this tragic and violent crime. Max Hathaway was a beloved husband, son, brother, father, and skilled pool player. He was a fun, loving, and caring friend to so many and truly enjoyed his role as a father to his two daughters, 11 and 19 months, another one on the way with his wife, Brenda. Max's family would like to share that he was a goofy, down-to-earth person who loved to make jokes and always had a positive attitude. His greatest loves outside of his family were gaming and playing pool. Max recently was a stay-at-home dad while working on completing his bachelor's degree in business administration at the University of Southern Maine. He had just received his diploma in the mail the day he was killed. His wife Brenda describes him as her best friend and that there is no one else like him and he is irreplaceable in her life and the lives of his daughters. That's the statement tonight from the family of Max Hathaway, who was 35 years old. And we certainly appreciate um, these family members opening up to us and, and sharing more information about their loved ones to us because our, our goal here now is to focus on the kind people um, that we have lost now and, and what they've done for their communities. Yeah, and not the way they died, but how they lived. Right, right. Um, you know, I know many of you tuning in um, right now, typically you'd, you'd look for... for 
a little more sense of normalcy. We want to bring in Dana Osgood, who does have a look at the forecast for you, just so you can kind of plan for the weekend. And actually, we do know that um, residents only hunting now open to all residents. Um, it was closed off in Lisbon, Lewiston, Bowdoin areas, um, but but now it is open to the whole state. Um, so we'll go to Dana for some weather. Going to take a quick check of the forecast out there today. It was a very warm day out there, much above at normal temperatures for this time of year. We got to 81 today in Portsmouth, got some 79s out there as well. This isn't usually typical weather for what we would see for almost November, but we are in the warm sector of a storm, so that is going to cause tomorrow to be on the warm side as well. But then we do have a pattern change on the way, which I will detail in just a couple of minutes. Today on the visible satellite imagery, we started out sunnier towards the coast. We've had some clouds lingering in the north over the past couple of days. That's because we've had a warm front just kind of lingering to our north, giving us some showers and some clouds as well. Overall, a mix of sun and clouds over the past couple of days, really. Tomorrow, though, is going to be a bit sunnier, but then, as I said, that pattern change is going to cause a lot of changes in both our temperature and sky condition as well. We had a couple of showers move through the York County area earlier, but those have since dissipated. Still have a couple of showers, again, to our north, thanks to that warm front which is eventually going to push off to our north as the cold front approaches, but that is going to cause some more showers to come in later this weekend. Low temperatures tonight because we are in such a warm area of this system. Low temperatures tonight, more reminiscent of our high temperatures for this time of year, so it's going to be a very warm night. But like I said, changes are on the way and temperature is going to be one of the main things that we're going to see. Warm today, very warm again tomorrow. Could see a couple 80s out there. And then once that front moves through Saturday night, temperatures come crashing down into the 40s for highs in a lot of places. So in our hour by hour forecast, Tomorrow we're going to see some more sunshine, especially towards the coast, and then we're going to have that cold front move through in the afternoon. And we can see here just a couple of showers associated with this cold front. Not a ton out there, but it is going to cause a lot of changes in our temperatures. We'll start out Sunday on the chilly side, and then we're going to have some of our showers move in. Could see a little bit of some snow showers in the foothills and the mountains. But we aren't look at, looking at any accumulating snow until we get into Monday, where we could see some snow showers coming up in northern Maine. So like I said, we've been in that warm sector, and that's going to allow our temperatures Saturday, but ahead of the cold front, to be the warmest day of the week. But once that cold front moves through Saturday afternoon, that's when our pattern shifts, and we're going to get much chillier air from Canada coming in, and that's where we're going to see some showers in southern Maine, but we could even see some light accumulating snow in northern Maine for the system. A lot of places seeing one to two inches of snow coming up. So for our marine forecast, two to four feet for seas, a little bit of gusty winds out there up to 20 knots and the water at 57 degrees. So here's taking a look at our seven day forecast. So for Saturday is going to be definitely the warmest day of the week. High 70s out there, could see a couple 80s as well. Uh, Sunday is going to be a much cooler day once that cold front is moved through. Highs only in really the upper 40s. Showers in the afternoon could see a couple of snow showers up in the northern mountains. And then that rain is going to linger into Monday. And it's going to be rather chilly overnight, getting into freezing in a lot of places. So that's why we could see some of that accumulating snow up in northern Maine. Tuesday for Halloween, going to be relatively cool and dry, so not a bad day there. I'll send things back up to you guys upstairs. Dana, we appreciate it. Thanks so much. We will uh, notice that change right around the corner that is certainly coming our way. Um, we want to get back, obviously, to the, the major story that we are following for you tonight, the discovery of uh, Robert Card's body tonight, uh, found dead. Our Jack Moment is in Lewiston again tonight, um, talking with someone we have been hearing from regularly over the last 48 hours, um, Leroy Walker, who is a counselor in the city of Auburn, right across the river, um, and also learned that his son was among the dead um, from Wednesday's shooting. And, and Jack, I understand you're, you're talk talking with Leroy Roy tonight. 
Yeah, Brian and Amanda, that's correct. We actually switched gears here from Lewiston. We are now in Auburn right now, still very much a community impacted by this tragic shooting, the 10th largest in the United States history, 18 people killed. Still family members working to pick up the pieces, understand just what happened here as we had another piece of that puzzle completed here as we did find out the suspected gunman was, his body was found uh, this evening in Lisbon Falls. And at the heart of this is the families that are impacted by this. And one man we've been talking to since about the midnight hour of this tragic shooting is Auburn City Councilor Leroy Walker. So we're actually going to bring Leroy Walker in right now um, to talk about this. And I know, Leroy, um, this has got to be such a raw feeling. Just a little less than an hour ago, we had this press conference. Um, you told me earlier you were listening in. Um, what did you hear? Well, I heard the first thing that I heard was they found uh, Mr. Carr at uh, uh, Redemption Center or something like that in Lisbon Falls. And, and of course, feelings came over me that I was hoping when they said it, in my mind, I was hoping they were saying that they caught him, not just found his body. And, and of course, it was they found his body. He was dead. Why were you hoping that they caught him instead of finding his body? I wanted more closure to know and hope to find out why he, why he went through such a, a, a crazy moment uh, the other night when he took the life of all these people. Uh, that we'll never have that closure. There's, there's 18 families that, that lost their loved ones and we just, we can't ask him no questions. We can't get no answers. Uh, the law enforcement can't get any answers. Uh, justice, to me, is not done. The man took the chicken way out so that he wouldn't have to face any of the consequences that he, he did. So uh, I'm still in my heart empty for the answers of why he took my son's life. Now, Leroy, if, if you could ask a question about this, anything that can make you feel any better sense of closure about this, what would you like to know, maybe? I, I would ask, what made him pull the trigger? Why did you pull the trigger? The, the, I believe his mind was affected with something. I, uh, I've heard nothing, but this man was a good man coming all the way up until something happened to him. and, and they, uh, mentally ill at the end. I don't know what happened to the brain other than he definitely was affected by something. The devil somehow started to take over control of him in the mind. Uh, but he would probably have to have medical attention and everything first before he could answer the questions. But that's one of the very first why did you kill these people? And Leroy, I want to backtrack a little bit to the, it was 7.45 in the evening when um, law enforcement discovered uh, the body of the suspected gunman, um, Robert Card. Um, there, I believe, two lines of confusion you, um, and frustration and wonder that you had heading into this. The first, when we originally met um, and you heard on our airwaves um, around the midnight hour of the shooting where you didn't know the fate of your son. You were That's looking right. for him everywhere. And now that confusion and frustration was directed into why this happened in the first place. Um, what has been your thought process over these last 50, 55 hours? Yeah, that, that's a good question, tell you the truth. I, uh, I've been so busy answering questions and getting my son's name out there so people knew exactly who he was and that all of these families probably feel the same as I do. They, that was my loved one. He was my kid born. I, I brought him up. And now I've lost him. Uh, and I answered that a thousand times. I tried to make it so everybody knows Joe Walker. <laughs> and now, now we're standing here and, and uh, in a very short time, there'll, there'll be no more questions asked. And I won't be able to give any kind of answers because we've lost this man by taking his own life. You know, we heard law enforcement say during the press conference that there will be more to come um, regarding their investigation, regarding uh, what they discovered. I know a big question that's been asked uh, by the media to law enforcement has been that note that was left by uh, Robert Card, um, yeah. according to law enforcement. Um, you know, but 
at the end of the day, as we've been saying all along in our airwaves, it's, it's at the end of the day, we want to rem remember the Mainers that were lost um, this week. Um, and you were saying that soon there would be no more questions for you to answer. But I mean, what do you want? What do you hope people take away from this experience, knowing your son about all of this? Uh, let's make sure that it doesn't happen in any other communities. That's the big thing. We all together, we could stop this if we would only stop the hate in this world. Once we find a way of doing that, these things are not going to happen out there. That doesn't help getting my son's name out there or letting people in the world know that my son was a, a good boy, excellent kid for this community, is going to be missed by many. Uh, but you again, see? you people are going to go away. Uh, and when the, I'm hoping that we connected with enough people out there so they, they think about it for a long time and maybe they'll ask questions that will force people in this community to keep answering. And maybe we'll come to a, a settlement in our hearts and brains that uh, there's a reason for what happened. There'll never be a good reason, I'm sure, but somewhere as along the way, the Lord is gonna, gonna make that answer come about and, and then we'll maybe settle and go on in life. And um, just, Again, just to talk more about um, Joey. He went by Joey, right? Yeah, no, um, most of the time, yeah. You, I remember you were telling me that some of the things that he's left behind. Um, obviously, you're his father, um, but he left behind uh, children, right? He, and, and his grandchildren and, and, of course, his wife. We, we don't want to leave Tracy out of it because that, Tracy was the life of his life. And... Uh, and she had two kids. He married her a few years after they dated, and he was bringing up the children with her at the same time. They were very young when they met. And, and then they grew up. One is in college, one is here working. And he had two children, a boy and a girl. And that's their grandchildren. And they were bringing the last three, four, five years, whatever the age of the, the little ones are, they, uh, they've been bringing them up together with the father of the two because he had separated. So it's a, it's a real close, close family. Uh, I have a second, I had a second wife. My first wife uh, passed just a few years ago. Uh, my other one, uh, I divorced, so I'm, I'm not a married man. Uh, but all of us are a loving family. We're, we're all together. Definitely a tight knit uh, family. And you know, I can't, I can't help but say this again, that it's just, um a hero you describe that's going to be deeply missed. He will be by by many in this community. Uh, thousands, there'll be thousands. Yes, definitely. Be Leroy, um, we can't thank you enough for joining us now three times um, since this horrific tragedy, unthinkable tragedy happened. Um, and again, we we thank you again for joining us to talk about your reaction to um, Maine State Police law enforcement investigators um, discovering. Uh, the body of the suspected gunman, Robert Card. Now, uh, they said that they discovered his body along the Androscoggin River uh, in Lisbon Falls. And as we've been saying all along, at the end of the day, we can't help but remember those we lost in this tragic shooting, the 10th largest mass shooting in U.S. history, and certainly Maine's largest mass shooting. It'll be years of us talking about this, thinking about this, wondering um, how we just pick up the pieces. But these are stories that we're going to hope to tell and we'll hope to pick up the pieces and move forward, but never forget those that we lost. For now, we'll toss it back to you guys in the studio. Jack, Brian, Jack Amanda. Jack uh, a great interview there with, with Leroy Walker, again, someone we have spoken to a few times. And, and if we could bring up that um, full screen again of, of those lost, um, you see Joe Walker down there at the bottom, uh, bottom right. Um, want to assure Mr. Walker that, that that is not a name that we will be forgetting anytime soon, um, nor are any of these names. And and certainly um, thinking about the 13 who are injured in this as well. And, and these are all people that, that we are going to be focused on in the coming days now that this manhunt is over. Um, this is what's important now. I'm getting some more reaction from people who live in the, in the Lewiston community. One of them is the owner of Raincourt and Sons, and if you're familiar with that that company, uh, it's a shoe making business, making shoes by hand, a trade that has defined the city of Lewiston. It's a staple of that city. And here's what he said to me: 
I don't want in any way for this event to determine the fate of Lewiston. There's so many people around the state that are saddened by this terrible tragedy and are sharing their concerns. Friends of the company and the family from Spain, Italy, Brazil, Japan, Canada, and England have reached out to share their concerns and care for us and the people of Lewiston. We will not allow Lewiston to be defined by this tragedy. It will be mine and my family's mission to bring us back from this horrible tragedy. It's Mike Rancourt. Wow. Um, and, and we do have just in a statement um, from President Joe Biden uh, to share with you. Um, he is saying that once again, an American community and American families have been devastated by gun violence in all at least 18 souls brutally slain, more injured, some critically, and scores of family and friends praying and experiencing trauma no one ever wants to imagine. Tonight, we're grateful that Lewiston and surrounding communities are safe after spending excruciating days hiding in their homes. I thank Governor Janet Mills for her steady leadership during this time of crisis and continue to direct my administration to provide everything that is needed to support the people of Maine. Americans should not have to live like this. I once again call on Congress to fulfill their obligation to keep the American people safe. Again, a statement tonight from uh, the President Biden on what is happening in our community. Uh, we do want to remember that there is a, an active scene um, right now, at least in the terms of the fact that there is a police presence and, and flashing lights and what we have seen so much of, uh, even though the tone has changed quite a bit. Our Alex Haskell is live in Lisbon Falls tonight with um, what is going on at that scene closest to where uh, Robert Card's body was found tonight. Hi, Alex. Hi, Brian. I think you explained it the best. Uh, it's an active scene, but what we're seeing is, or what we're not seeing though, is an urgency. Um, not a whole lot going on, but we have some members of law enforcement here, uh, two members and a cruiser blocking the way to Capitol Ave. And this road goes down for about another half mile. And that's where main recycling is. And that's where Robert Card's body has been found. And if we're zooming down there, you might be able to see some police cruisers gathered down uh, Capitol Ave with their lights on. And we've seen those cars move around a little bit, but other than that, not too much movement. There was a helicopter around here a little while ago circling around that has since left. And we have many members of uh, the media gathered here with us as this is a important piece of the puzzle, finding Robert Card. And we do have some more members of law enforcement showing up now. They've been coming in and out here. And just to give you a sense of where we are, we are about a two minute drive from the boat launch where authorities have been really set up for quite a while so they could get access to the Androscoggin River. And that Androscoggin River flows down here and goes by main recycling. There's a bit of a tree line. I was checking okay. out Google Maps. Yeah, yeah. There's the recycling plant, and then right, there's a line of trees, and then it's the Androscoggin River. So uh, they uh, had good, uh, uh, good intentions to be in this area and ultimately finding Robert Card uh, a little after seven, and that's actually when I was speaking to the sister of one of the victims, Brian uh, McFarland. He was a member of the deaf community, and he was at a cornhole, turn or, yeah, cornhole tournament um, at a Schmengi's Bar and Grill. So, um, you know, it was amazing. You know, during that time, I was chatting with a victim's sister, and um, this was this was happening here. So, uh, it's an active scene, but guys, um, there is no urgency here as things are. Uh, coming to an end. Alex Haskell in Lisbon Falls tonight. We thank you uh, for your coverage this evening and throughout this whole ordeal. Yes, and I do want to point out once again that traffic moving behind him is a sign um, that this shelter in place has been lifted, uh, that we are taking that small step towards a little bit more normalcy again ac all across the state. And, and this, you know, again, signs of, of moving forward here in Lewiston, um, people putting up notes. Um, Lewiston Strong has very much been um, a theme here and um, small gesture, but um, certainly can go a long way. And it, it shows the community really trying to support one another. And again, people we spoke to today who uh, were helped putting up these signs said in part what we've been talking about is they were unable to get together. Um, right. But they could create a sense of together 
um, by doing this gesture um, and letting people know that um, they're thinking of each other and supporting each other and now we would like to see more of these physical gatherings to to process what has happened right including one on Sunday at 6 at the Franco Center um, in Lewiston uh, they will be able to, to come together for a vigil there for, for the first time uh, since this tragedy Wednesday night I want to mention too here's one last look at um those lives lost, 18 people killed in these these shootings, um, 13 people injured. We're still waiting to hear more on them, certainly. Um, but you keep seeing the scroll at the bottom of your screen. If you need some help, call or text 988. Um, something we cannot stress enough. We know this has been a very difficult few days for many, many people, um, including surrounding communities. If, if you need help, um, you can call or text 988. You can also text um, right here, text support to us, 207-828-6622, and we will send you a list of resources available. Our coverage tomorrow morning starts at 5 o'clock. Uh, I believe we do not have a 6 p.m. newscast, but we will be streaming a newscast uh, with the latest updates uh, on our New Center Main Plus uh, app. Uh, and don't forget a press conference uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. with more details of what happened. All right, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Please take care.